morally reprehensible. Morally? Why exactly morally is there well, a distinction between one and three trillion? Very arbitrary. Because everyone here is going to have to pay off that debt, and that dollar that you think is going to have value is decreasing by the day. Whether you're, econo- whether you're pro-choice or Democrat. But inflation this, is something that's going to occur no matter what. Can, Sorry. Can I Sorry. finish? Okay. I apologize. Uh, it's okay. Um, inflation is not a guaranteed human norm. That's not true, but I'll get to that in a second. Every single person here, it will be harder than ever for you to own a home. So inflation is immoral because you're going to enter into a housing market where everything costs three times as much in the housing market than it did a decade ago. You will not be able to afford a down payment, Mm -hmm. let alone even be able to build the capital necessary for other goods and services that you might want to build wealth. And you know who does benefit is your parents' generation and baby boomers, no offense, that do own their assets. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we back again with a new video. Today, we're going to check out anti-capitalists suggest inflation isn't real. Okay, this is going to be interesting. I would love to check this out with you guys. Let's go right into it. Um, how do you feel about like the current state of the economy and this whole theory of like immaculate disinflation? If you're familiar with the term, say the sec- say that again. Immaculate disinflation. Well, we're not living through that. Um, okay. But yeah. Yes. Um, and where's your proof that we aren't exactly? Are you taught disinflation? Yes. That we actually don't are see- we're not seeing a surge in prices. No, disinflation means the inflation rate is decreasing over time. Well, so there is some evidence to show that. For example, televisions, iPhones. Specific products. That's not an illustration of all inflation, though. No, I was going to prove your... I was going to agree with you that... Okay. But if you just go to a grocery store, eggs are far more expensive than they were two years ago. You don't have to overthink it. I mean, the college degree here at this university... What is it per year, guys? 30,000. How much? They've been... 10 in state, 30,000 out of state. Yeah. 10 years ago, I bet it was 18,000 out of state, right? So Yes, but they've been trying to raise the Cal State uh, tuition for quite some time, even before inflation spiked to its current levels, or previous levels about a year ago. They've just been delaying it for quite some time. So yeah, it's not I mean, exactly... We're, we're living through a decades-long inflation surge. And it, it the best evidence, you can see it either in the artificial boosting of profit-earning but ratios. Even, Go ahead. Even during like Trump's administration, inflation was actually quite low. So that's not no, it was low then, but true. it's not low right now. Yes, but why was it low then? Would you say? Well, because we had economic growth, and we didn't, we weren't borrowing two to three trillion dollars a year. We actually, we actually were. We were borrowing quite a bit of money. We were borrowing about a trillion dollars a year, Still not quite a bit. So we're borrowing about triple that right now. Yes. Do you agree? Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I mean, I think so, that's how the math works so out. So triple in the larger in the law of big numbers is a big deal. So mm-hmm. borrowing eight hundred billion, not excusable. Borrowing two point five trillion. Morally reprehensible. Morally, why exactly morally is there well, a distinction between one and three trillion? Very cause, arbitrary. Because everyone here is going to have to pay off that debt, and that dollar that you think is going to have value is decreasing by the day. Whether you're econo- whether you're pro-choice or democratic. But inflation is something that's going to occur no matter what. Can, Sorry. Can I Sorry. finish? Okay. I apologize. Uh, it's okay. Um, inflation is not a guaranteed human norm. That's not true, but I'll get to that in a second. Every single person here, it will be harder than ever for you to own a home. So inflation is immoral because you're going to enter into a housing market where everything costs three times as much in the housing market than it did a decade ago. You will not be able to afford a down payment, Mm -hmm. let alone even be able to build the capital necessary for other goods and services that you might want to build wealth. And you know who does benefit is your parents' generation and baby boomers, no offense, that do own their assets and you won't. And so secondly, inflation is a choice. It's not built into the human experience. Hmm. Uh, The human experience, sure. But the economic system, especially a capitalist economic system, it definitely is. How would well, you it how would you try how you to build achieve zero percent yeah, inflation? Zero percent inflation? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want zero percent inflation. So then it is built in. It, well, inflation and it is a necessary evil. No, I, I said I wouldn't want it. Okay. okay. Moderate inflation is good for money velocity and for growth. Yes. But you need to manage that versus the growth rate, right? So yes. this goes back to Milton Friedman's idea of the Chicago <laughs> mon- monetarism. You can laugh all you want. <laughs> Friedman? Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. well, what's so funny about Milton Friedman? The fact he's the greatest economist of the 20th century? or Qualify. That's a, I don't know. I wouldn't say he's exactly that. So you're more like a John, I respect Maynard, your John Maynard Keynes guy? So yeah. Not necessarily. Okay. No, no. But I just take a more broad approach than okay. uh, specifically Okay, so Milton we don't Friedman. need to have a central bank. We do have a central bank. Okay. Okay, bold, bold claim. I'll follow you, though. I'll you follow you. You don't need to have a central bank. I used to be very against the Federal Reserve as well. Okay, I'm just saying you don't need to have one. But okay. we choose to have one. The central bank has been overly politicized mm. to try to stop, let's just say, natural economic cycles from occurring. Both administrations, Bush, Obama, Trump, Biden, have okay. leaned on the central bank to use cheap money as a way yeah. to try to keep okay. the good times flowing and the good times going. Yeah, yeah. Okay, That's so, definitely for sure. So we, we don't agree. Well, we don't disagree. Um, yeah, but here's the other thing I would say. 
I gotta say, your protesters are kind of weak here, guys. Aren't I expected they? more Aren't out they? of them, right? They didn't seem to have the energy to get all the I know, I thought they'd have more, you know... Yeah, I like it. Please keep going, yeah. I will say, though, um... Going back to the, like, mortgage rates, as you were saying, I would say that probably has a lot more to do with private equity buying up homes than the inflation rate. Uh, well, hold on. There's two parts to that. I'm not talking okay. just about mortgage. Interest rates are up. I'm talking about just the asset price itself. That, too. I would say it's a lot more related to private equity that, buying yeah, up but, homes. But why, so why is private equity doing that? Because they have so much cheap money that we've put into the system. They don't have to do with it. Mm. Now, if sh I think we could agree, actually, mm -hmm. there should be laws against BlackRock coming in and buying single-family oh, yeah. homes and oh, renting yeah. them back. You should not be a society of renters. It's bad for society. Yes, yes. So we can agree on that. I oh, say yes, that as a conservative. Sure. It's bad for the, the human experience Good. and for yeah. you know, generational flourishing. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you open up the guzzle of cheap money, which we have done, especially yes. post-COVID, so, mm -hmm. there's a price to that. And the price is that your oh, yeah. currency gets weaker. True. Okay. And we're seeing that right now. Yes. Um, so you, would you say that it was actually necessary to, in order to get out of the um, huge recession we experienced during the pandemic to... No, I, I think we should have just opened up the economy. We never should have locked down the country. Okay. So we never should have borrowed the $6 trillion. We never should have done the stimulus stuff. It so, hurt every single one of you. It increased suicide rates, depression, anxiety, fiscal problems, economic problems, political problems. I could definitely agree with that to some extent. But would you say even in, say, 2009... Uh, lowering the interest rates to zero in that sense was that. Well, we didn't necessary? go to zero. We didn't. Uh, we went down. Low, believe it or okay. not, we went to like five percent. COVID, we went to like near zero. Yes. But no, I, I have a contrarian view on 2008. I think we should have let the banks fail. Ooh. Okay. And I, and I think we should have. I think we actually should have allowed the market to solve it, not to okay. have socialism for the rich and you know what? Bru yes. brutal capitalism for the working class. I totally agree with that. Okay, so I totally agree with I that. I think that Wells Fargo, Goldman. I think that Lehman and the big banks that failed should have had to actually. Okay. Cl climb themselves out, and, or you you just you destroyed a moral hazard. Yeah. is what you did, and zero executives went mm. to prison. I agree okay. with Elizabeth yeah. Warren on this. None of these robber mm. barons that did what they did in 08 served mm. federal prison time. Mm. Meanwhile, and I will use a political statement to contrast it. Grandmas that went into the Capitol on January 6th and took selfie videos are in federal prison. You mm. ask me who's a bigger threat to democracy? Wall Street executives <laughs> that bankrupted our economy yeah. in 2008 oh, are a course. bigger threat to oh, our country course. than people now, that walked into the Capitol building and took a selfie. Now, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I, I don't know if my memory served me correctly, but who was... Uh, did Steve Mnuchin serve under the Trump administration? Yeah, he was from Go Government Sachs. Yeah. Did, he, did he serve under the Trump administration? Uh, that, that's right, yeah. So why would Trump invite someone like that who should probably be in federal prison into well, his yeah. administration? I, I have a lot of personnel uh, disagreements. I love Trump, but I think you love Trump. Love Trump. Why would you love? Why would? So do we love Trump, everybody? So to ask to ask a broader question, yes. why would you love any politician? Um, they, well, have a, they have a job to do. Why be emotionally so attached? I have, in that sense. To, and I don't say this like lightly. I, I do have a friendship with them. I've gotten to know him over a couple okay, of years. Okay. So, and disclosing I also, bias. Disclosing yeah, bias. 100% okay. biased. And Good. so I also think he's one, he, whether you hate him or love him, he's a once in 100 year But why person. would you hate him or love him? He just has a job to do. Right? Well, I also love what he did as country. Okay. As, as president for the okay. country. So, would but, you say, though, that yeah. you're probably more of a fiscal conservative? Me? Yeah. Yeah, and I probably his borrowing was one, one of the two. So three things, if you want to just be full disclosure, yeah. that I think President Trump could have done better, and I think he will do better. Fiscal deficit spending, okay? Why do you think he will do better? Let, let me get to all three, okay? Okay. Uh, COVID and certain personnel choices, okay? Okay. Those are the three things. And, okay. my, and I could list 100 accomplishments. Those are three things I think that the first administration, you know, that wasn't their best. Yeah. Why it could have been better? I think that he's... he's um, He's got the world against him, and he's uh, he's when if he becomes president again, which the 50-50 shot he will, uh, he he's gonna set the world on fire. I would say he's a little bit too egotistical and emotional to really counter the world being against him. He seems to react a little too emotionally to you, these I mean, kinds of things. I don't want to get too deep into it, but you're not gonna you're not gonna convince me of on negative Trump stuff. So okay, okay, interesting. So your mind isn't necessarily that open. Isn't this changed my mind? You could try. Okay. I mean, you're not gonna. But didn't you just say kind of up front that uh? Not, I mean, I'm, I'm open-minded to hear. I'm just saying you're not going to change my mind on this okay. stuff. Okay. Okay. So then, what is it that's leading you to think that Trump is going to have better decision-making in this next term, specifically when it comes to borrowing? Um, because he I is going to assess. I mean, I, I just, I don't know. And honestly, okay. I just, there's, okay. there's little evidence except the fact that just we're, we're going to have a debt crisis, the likes of which the country's never seen, 
and he's going to have to address it. We need to have severe cuts in the federal budget. We need okay. To so it. would you say that the downgrading of America's credit rating is more related to our national debt or the inability to um, handle it in a mature way? Um, more both, but more just the debt itself is. Okay. I mean, we now we now owe more than we're worth as a country. So I want to yeah. get to other qu questions because you've had okay. some time. But final Perfect. question. I want to be respectful. But so I guess. How would, if you think that that's an issue, that we have more debt than, say, our current income? Well, we do. Well, yeah, but uh, if you would just say... The, the value of the country. Of course, yeah. of course. Of course, we control um, our own currency, and our currency is yeah. Are you a the number one reserve. Guy? So, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah so. It's, it's the number one reserve, so you know that well, gives us a lot of wiggle so room. it's decreasing. It used to be 75% of the world's reserve currency status 20 years ago. Now it's 55%. I would say... Do you know about BRICS? You know BRICS, right? <laughs> Bricks, yeah, I do. Bricks I do. is creating an alternative. I think they're dollar. paper tiger. Okay. Uh, I hope you're. I actually hope you're right. I don't. I don't believe I that India, right. China, South Africa, and Russia could ever work together to create their own. I hope unified you're right. currency. I, don't, I just hope we're not too prideful. Definitely a paper tiger. Thank you. So <clears throat> my observations was this video is that the guy was in hurry to ask questions. He's he has like a million questions in his head <laughs> to ask Chas Kick. And at the same time, he was not paying attention to fully the entire answer itself. He just wanted to just keep on asking the question and trying to like prove Charles Cake wrong. His perspective about um, money policies and is totally different. And uh, someone who you can hardly change his initiative, his idea, his thoughts in his head. You can't. You can. He's not actually open-minded. I'll, I'll put it that way. He's not actually open-minded to new things. He feels like he knows everything. Uh, I love how Charles Cake respectfully answered his questions and without any harsh interactions and also giving him reasons why he chose Donald Trump and also why he answered the question in that manner. They started him 10, um, 10 years ago, the tuition fee at the same university is like $18,000. Right now it's $30,000. It's, it's, it's increasing. Inflation is real. Either people accept it or not, it's real. The our generation is kind of like hard for people not to own a house with a car. You understand? So the inflation is, is actually increasing because of the debts that um United States um, encountered during the COVID. We are experiencing this and we are still passing through the inflation. Not just America itself, other countries in the world are passing through high inflation this period because of the um, boring and the crisis that happened during the COVID area. So what Charles Kick just kick is trying to give him more detailed explanation, but the students, me call me students, the anti-socialist is the um the bunking, is still refusing to accept it. <clears throat> this was interesting to watch. I actually love the video and I also learned from inside. There's some ways that Charles Kick um used in this video that I've never heard before. That I'm just trying I'm learning more about. So comment below what you think about this video, give us a thumbs up, share this video to as many as comments to come to China. I will see you guys on the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers, pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed. I got scales all